camp for me, um, I mean, obviously it was truly a grind, but um, I think the biggest thing in camp was getting to embrace that grind uh, just with all you know my brothers out there. Um, it's not easy waking up early every day, leaving the facility late. Um, but you know that's the beauty of it to prepare for the season. Um, you know I feel like um, us, especially um, as an offense, um, really got to figure out who we are um, and who we want to be this season. Um, and I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm also excited about the defense as well. I mean, I thought that um, they came out to play um, and were ready every single day. Um, I think that our defense is better, our offense is better this year, and um, I'm really excited for this season. About the expectations, it seems like some people have you guys way up, and then some of the, the media poll had you kind of fourth place in the Mountain West, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, everyone's going to have uh, their opinion. And I mean, obviously, based off of last season, um, it's, uh, I guess, a tough call to make. I mean, we, we lost a lot of close games. Um, but for us as a, as a team, I think uh, we set our expectations really high for ourselves. Um, I think it's, um, I think it's a, a really big deal um, for us to you know, go out there and focus on the task at hand uh, mainly, um, and not worry too much about what people are saying, um, and, and you know, just focus on us as a team, and you know what, what we have to do daily to get better uh, for Fridays and Saturday nights. As an offensive line, you guys have a lot of guys back, a lot of experience. Is that you guys going to help set the tone for that offense? Oh yeah, um, I agree with that. Um, I mean, all all of our guys are coming back. Uh, Sean Taylor, uh, Moroni. Roman, Quinn, um, and then so there's some younger guys that are going to be stepping up this season. Uh, Big Al, Alfred, um, and then uh, Mick. Um, I mean, all of us, you know, we've all embraced embraced this grind together. And I mean, us being big dudes on the field is uh, sometimes not easy in the hot weather and all those pads on us. But, you know, we grind together and we work hard because, you know, we all have the same goal. The uh, playing the right tackle, right guard thing. Mm -hmm. Are the techniques close enough that it's no big deal? Um, I wouldn't. I mean, they're they're kind of close. I mean, in the past game, you know, our our idea is to you know stay vertical and stay square. But I mean, it's just a different. There's just different positions we're going against inside. You know, I'm going against a way thicker dude, stronger guy on the edge. Our tackles are going to have to go against a fast guy who's. I mean, could rip under you or, you know, I mean, sometimes they're, they're bigger too. They could bull rush you, but I mean, it, it, it's kind of similar, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's so much. I mean, there's just two different breeds of players in front of you on the field. So it's a little bit different. Like to run block or pass block? What do you, like, what do you prefer personally? <sighs> uh, personally, I like them both. I mean, I, I just want to get out there and get my job done and score touchdowns. That's, that's what I want. So I'm going to do the best I can on the field to make that happen. You guys start off with a really tough one right off the bat with Michigan State. Your thoughts on going there this, this variety? Um, I think uh, my thoughts are, you know, just to treat it how I would treat any other game this season. Um, you know, I don't want to get too nerved up about it. Um, I mean, obviously, it's a big deal, a big stage. Um, but I love those type of moments. Um, I feel like I love having pressure on my shoulders and, you know, getting the job done is, you know, my thing out there and making big plays. So I'm, I'm excited to be on a big stage like that. It's going to be a fun, fun night for our team. When you look at Michigan State, that's a team that ranked second in the nation in rushing defense last mm -hmm. season. And I mean, they just they just don't let much go up the middle. When right. you guys are game planning for that and you're looking at them on on film, what what's the scouting report and how do you get through that? Um, I mean, the biggest thing is to uh, trust our coaches, Coach Farmer. I think he does a great job uh, game planning along with uh, uh, the assistant coach, uh, Coach Canova. I mean, they do a fantastic job. Um, you know teaching us what we need to do on the field and, you know, game planning each week, and especially for Michigan State. I mean, they got some big boys up front. They got some nice linebackers. So, I mean, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a, I guess, a war in those trenches uh, come Friday night. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more prepared than I ever have been in my entire life. So, you know, I'm excited for it.
How does a guy from Round Rock, Texas, end up a Kansas City Chiefs fan? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, uh, a lot of people do say that to me. Um, I guess it's just uh, growing up. My dad, um, he introduced me to the game of football when I was six. Um, you know, and right then and there, I had a hard time. You know, wanting to play at first, but um, once I got on the field. Um, then I really found the love for that game even at that age. But I, I just remember my dad always every Sunday uh, putting on a Chiefs hat and a Chiefs jersey, and, you know, I just went along with it. And, you know, I love the way he would yell and scream and, you know, and do his Chiefs chant and stuff. So, I mean, it was just uh, just something I look forward to every Sunday, and then that's just how I became a big Chiefs fan. So Friday night's going to be the first chance for a lot of fans to really see this team, and fair or not, a lot of their opinions on the team are going to just kind of come out of that game. Yeah. What are you wanting people to really think about this team after Friday night? Um, I think what I, what I would want people to, uh, to see in our team is just um, how hard uh, we fight on the field. Um, you know, regardless of the outcome, I want them to know that, you know, we're going to give all effort all four quarters and, you know, we're not going to give up. Um, no matter what the score is, if we're winning or if we're losing, um, you know, and I think that'll just set the tone for the season for any teams we play when they watch us as well that Friday night to show that we're going to go out there, we're going to fight, we're going to keep going and going no matter what. Probably there's a lot of experience. You guys went to Wisconsin last year, another big time game this Friday night. What can you take from Wisconsin's game last year? Can you, is there anything you can apply to going into another big game like this against Michigan State in another hostile environment? Yeah. Um, I think, uh, for one, the big difference um, going into Wisconsin was we kind of put a team together, um, especially at the, as an O-line. I mean, all of us on the O-line, that was our first game starting. Um, you know, now we have a lot of experience under our belt. Um, we played in a full season. We played in a bowl game. Um, you know, we're used to, uh, to, that, to that big environment as it is already. I mean, even in practice, we'll... Uh, when we're with offense, we'll blast the music as loud as we can when we're running our offense just so we can get the feel of, you know, how loud the crowd, you know, could be and will probably will be. Um, but I think the, the big difference will be um, the experience we have from last year and then going into this year and the amount of returners we have. Um, you know, it's going to be uh, really nice, you know, having that all that experience under our belt heading into the game. After going through all of spring, fall camp, uh, whether it's 11-11s or one-on-ones, what's the one player on the defense that you really don't like having to see that you're going to have to block for a drill? Um, personally, I don't really like to think like that. I mean, I don't. in my opinion, I don't, I don't mind any person who's in front of me. I mean, I, I'm going gonna, gonna to get better regardless who it is. I mean, it could be Aaron Donald for the Rams, or it could be, you know, a guy in front of me here. I mean, you know, I'll take any opportunity I can get and try to beat him the best I can. Um, but if I could say some guys that have stood out to me in camp on the D-line, um, definitely Tipa, um, our defensive end. Uh, Devon Anderson, he's done a really good job out there. Um, we've had some tough battles going one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Fua, uh, Chris Unga, I mean, all those guys up front, they do a good job up front, and um, I think they're going to be big time for us this year. But you are excited to hit somebody else in a different color, though. Oh, yeah, really excited. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a while, even after spring ball and then this whole camp. I mean, it's about time we get to suit up against someone else. What's your thoughts on Jordan Love and how he looked in, in spring ball cup? I know you're not a coach, but just yeah. me on the offensive line protecting the guy. Uh, Jordan Love, I'm, I'm really excited uh, to play and block for him. Um, I think that his confidence back there has grown greatly. Um, he, I mean, when he's back there, you can really see him reading all his reads and doing a really good job. And then even his leadership out there, I mean, I, I've seen a big difference from last year. I mean, you had a guy who uh, was in the mix, um, I guess, halfway through the season. He eventually started. Um, he wasn't that much of a vocal leader, but I mean, he went out and still made plays. And then this, this year, you know, he's out there with positive energy and getting me hyped, getting other guys hyped and, you know, just going out there and making me feel like, you know, this is a guy I want to block for. This is a guy that, you know, I think can get the job done. Game week, Michigan State. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this opportunity, watching our guys play um, against one of the best teams in the country. Uh, this is a team that um, I would think that has uh, – 
a Big Ten championship and playoff aspirations, and they certainly have the talent to come back, uh, the coming back uh, to do that. And I think they'll be in the hunt um, for both of those um, at the end of the year. And so it presents a, a tremendous opportunity for us to play um, in front of a, um, a great crowd, Big Ten country, um, and a storied program that uh, you know I think is um, – well spoken about and uh, very, very well deserved. It's uh, perennial power in the in the Big Ten, um, and so be a tremendous opportunity for our guys to go see right where we're at. And and I know um, our kids are excited about it. Um, and so that uh, that kind of leads us into game week. This is a, a team that I'm uh, I'm anxious to watch play um, as we come together. Um, I think camp has been good. It's been physical. Um, it's been a grind. Um, as most camps are, but uh, our guys are, I think, excited and prepared for this opportunity to go out and play Friday night. So with, uh, with that, I'll go ahead and open it up uh, for any questions. Coach, when you look at this game, it's, it's a team that brings back 18 starters versus a team that brings back 19 starters. And does that make it any, di- I mean, does it make it any easier to game plan, especially the first week of the season against a team that has so much returning talent? I mean, do, do, like just as far as expecting knowing what to expect? Well, yeah, I think the thing that uh, you kind of look at is um, the consistency that they've had in their coaching staff and their schemes. I think that's the first thing you look at. Um, And so that's kind of what you're preparing for. And then as you see the players, certainly there's a lot of them coming back. And so uh, it's not hard to see LJ Scott all over the tape, uh, especially at the end of the year. Um, The quarterback is extremely athletic uh, and uh, Man, he can throw it on the run very, very well, especially to his left. Uh, very interesting. Um, he is, uh, I think he's very good. Uh, it's a very good receiving core. I think, uh, you know, they've got the ability to uh, high point a ball and they've got speed. Um, I keep hearing how it's one of the best in the Big Ten. And then certainly the front seven on defense. Uh, extremely talented secondary, but that front seven on defense is maybe the best we'll see all year. Coach, you mentioned Ilze Scott. I wanted to ask you, what, what have you seen out of him on film? What makes him so special? Don't tackle him high. You basically went through every position group they've got that's been super talented. Is there any any place where you feel like you may have like the advantage over them, or is it going to be a stick to what you learned in camp and just? I think. They do? I mean, I you know, the bull mascot may have an advantage. I don't know, but. Um, yeah, I, you know, the first game is a lot about us. Um, and I would think that they would think the same thing. It's, it's how they do it and, and what they do. And I think the same thing for us is what we're going to do. How are we going to defend the run? But it's, it's, um, it's what we do on offense, and we got to be who we are. And if we execute and give ourselves a chance and don't turn the ball over, um, that'll help you be in the game in the second half. And, you know, I think that's what we did last year in the opener against uh, another Big Ten opponent. We just broke down in the third quarter, and are we better this year and, and able to avoid that? Your entire career as a head coach has been when the Aggies have been affiliated with the Mountain West Conference. So what does that mean to us in this program to be in that conference? Well, I think it's certainly um, – the premier conference that Utah State in 120-something years of football, 130 years, I think, uh, this year, if I'm right, in our university. It's the best conference we've ever been in, and I think it gives us stability. I think it's it's great for all sports. Um, it gives us uh, recognition, um, whether it's TV coverage, uh, the opponents that we play, and I think it's you know I think it's been the best thing to happen to our athletic department in a long time. How much do you draw from the Wisconsin game last year as far as, I mean, you've got a lot of guys back that have experience and have been through that kind of battle. Yeah, the, you Just know. Get longer than the, than one half. Yeah. Um, Sean, you, if your question was referencing the Wisconsin game last year, um, you know, I think it's, uh, it's an easy to draw comparisons only because it's on the road, Big Ten, and you know, Wisconsin and, and Michigan State are going to compete for the Big Ten championship and a, and a playoff berth, and that'll probably be the case again this year. Um, the difference with us is we don't have near as many first-year starters 
um, going into the game as we did last year. Um, you know, the first snaps over the quarterback's head. I mean, what a disaster. Um, you know, hopefully we can avoid that this year. Um, we've got more experienced players. Now, does that lead to um, better play and and more points and, and all that stuff? I, obviously, that remains to be seen, but we're, we're not near as um, inexperienced going into the game as we were last year. There's a couple of questions like with the, uh, the two deep that was just released the other day. Um, one thing I noticed, Jamarcus Ingram, who was at safety on the first one released at the beginning of camp, and now he's back at cornerback. Uh, from what you've been saying, it sounds like he's going to kind of roam between the two yeah. positions a lot. About like proportions, how much time do you really expect? I, yeah, I can't, I can't predict that. Jamarcus is, um, you know, all summer long trained um, physically at corner, mentally at safety. The vast majority of the beginning of training camp, he played uh, safety. Um, you know, the, the emergence of Shaq Bond late in training camp has given us a little bit more flexibility to move him out to corner. The other thing that uh, leaving him at corner at the beginning of training camp did is help us evaluate corners a little bit better. So uh, I think you'll see Jamarcus at both spots, and I can't predict the, the uh, you know, I, obviously it's going to, how are the other corners playing? How's Shaq playing? Uh, how's Gage playing? Do you have any guys get banged up? But he's a guy that could go either way. It's like somebody like Jabril Peppers a couple years ago in Michigan where he was like very much of a roaming position. Is that kind of kind of what you envision for him for the year? No, not really. I think he'll play safety or corner um, going into each game. But I think, the, I mean, the guy sits in the same meeting room. So, I mean, he knows what to do at both positions. Yeah. And Julius Brown's done a great job of preparing him. And so I think his flexibility um, but between the two positions give us more options in the back end for Coach Patterson. Coach, I asked Rob about this, but Michigan State ranked second in rush defense last season. I mean, they, they just don't allow much up the middle. And when you look at a team like that, just could you just talk about their front seven and, and how dominant they are and how do you game plan for a team like that? Big, strong, physical. Um, you know, hopefully the pace can wear them out a little bit, get them tired. I mean, there's no secret that we're going to play with pace on offense. So, um, yeah, you're not going to – I mean – to to see where they ranked coming out of last year against the teams that they did it against, I think is pretty impressive. Um, they're they're deep, they're talented, and I just I mean I said it I think in my opening statement that the, it'll be the, maybe the best we see all year. Twenty nine forced turnovers last year, sixteen recovered fumbles. Those are big numbers. Uh, is this a defense that appears to be capable? Of Aggressive play and doing those kind of things. If I knew that, I wouldn't be the head coach of Utah State. I'd be predicting a lot, a lot more important stuff. I didn't know that team last year would do that. I mean, that's a lot of turnovers. That's a lot of forced turnovers and recovered turnovers. We did a tremendous job last year doing that ball searching. Um, that's the goal again this year, and, and um, hopefully we'll get a little lucky and, and get some balls on the ground. And, um, you know, we, you want to win turnover margin. That'll be a big key in the plan to win each and every week, not just in the first game, but not turning the ball over on offense and gaining turnovers on defense, and, and um, it gives you a chance to win. Can you comment on Taylor Compton being on, put on scholarship? Yeah, Taylor Compton is, um, you know, hits one of those guys as a coach. You know, you see come in here, and he's dreamed to play, about playing for Utah State his entire life and, and um, grew up in the shadows of, what was Romney Stadium and, and um, you know, a dream dream for him, but a kid that has come in and earned it. He's earned it on the field. He did it last year. Um, and, um, you know, now he's going to play at receiver. He's playing on special teams. Um, to me, he's absolutely earned it. Um, he's a tremendous teammate, and uh, he's done everything we've ever asked him to do. And, um, again, another one of those um, guys that have benefited from our developmental program with Dave Scholes and his staff. Um, and our walk-on program continues to produce guys that, that have played. And it's, um, uh, when I say played, played on the field and earned it. But it's a very rewarding thing for a coach to be able to do that. And, and um, there's a big, um, you know, I, I think the walk-on program is a big reason why we've been successful at Utah State. I was looking through some stats earlier, and I noticed back in 2014, so the last 10 one season for the program, you guys averaged 3.8 sacks per game, and then each of the last three years, it's only been 1.8. Um, I think with a lot of the front seven returning, you have a really good chance for it to 
return to that level of 2014. Uh, can you speak a little bit on how you think the Flintstones will be able to accomplish that, and especially how a, a guy like Tipa Galli will be able to yeah. uh, well, improve those numbers? I think uh, some of that's uh, in recruiting and, and maybe a little bit in developmental. Um, but, uh, you know, I think there, the improvement along our D, our D line has been good over the last year. Um, you know, Wale's had a really good camp. Jacoby Wildman plays with tremendous motor. You add Fuale Lua to that mix, and those guys are better pass rushers than I think we've had, all three of those guys. And then Tipa Naliai um, coming off the edge is um, he's got quick twitch, he's got speed. Um, he's long. He's extremely long, and hopefully he can produce a few sacks. I think one more question. I asked Rob the same thing, uh, but the first game of the season is the first chance for a lot of fans. It's the first time they really pay attention to the team, mm -hmm. and whether it's fair or not, it's where they get a lot of their opinions on the team for the rest of the year. What's the one oh, man. <laughs> Whew. I'm, I'm just saying what a lot of fans do. But, but knowing that. Like, Good thing we get to play 12 games, hopefully 13, maybe 14. But, but saying that, like, what's the one thing you want fans really to like, think about this team after Friday night? Well, I, I hope I don't, you know, I, I th the answer that I would give you would be not just Friday night, but every night that this team comes and plays with a tremendous amount of passion. They play with the chip on their shoulder. They play extremely hard. They're tough and they're physical. Um, and, um, you know, on top of that, now can we execute? Can we take care of the football? Can we be mentally disciplined enough to not have um, too many penalties? You're going to have some. Um, but all those kind of things. And then you got the chemistry and the leadership aspect. That'll be the kind of the third thing. And um, if those two and three, um, I think if those aspects rise, then you'll see a team that wins a lot of games. But I would hope that the fans come out and, and you say that team was well prepared. They played, their, they played their tails off. They're tough. They're physical. But I want them to say that every week, not just week one. Camp was really good. Um, I thought it was very competitive. And I think, um, especially as a defense, um, we really picked up where we left off in the spring. And this summer, we really grew. You know, as like a unit, um, we came together. Um, we're really close, and um, I think we took another step forward um, through the summer and through camp again. So, I think we're still um, we're still getting better and better, and I think camp put us in a good place to start the season this week. Um, as far as Michigan State goes, and watching film and stuff, and preparing for those guys, um, you know, they they're obviously got a, a lot of returning people as we do, so. Um, I expect them to be good at what they do. Um, I expect them to be disciplined and, um, you know, um, a sound, a sound football team. So I think that we're we're going in there to face a team that um, is going to know their game plan, is going to know what they they're going to do against us, and um, they're going to be prepared just as we are. And I think that um, their quarterback is a good player. Um, I think he's going to make a lot, he can make a lot of plays on his feet and and throwing. Um, they got a good running back um, and a couple of good receivers that are, that are coming back. So it'll be a competitive game. Um, there's a lot of talent on the field, and I expect them to be a disciplined group. It's usually with Michigan State, you, you know you're going to face some smash mouth football. They're going to have a lot of good runs. Um, they're going to be a very physical team. But this year, kind of. A little different than past years, they also have a really talented receiving core. How do you guys in the secondary plan really be able to corral those receivers, but at the same time help where you guys need to in the running game? Um, as far as the receivers go, man, I think that um, just the way we, we prepared through camp, we have a lot of receivers that are very similar, I think. Um, with Jalen Green, with Tarver, um, um, Aaron Vaughn, Jordan Nathan, some of those guys. Um, we got some big bodies. We also have some very fast guys that um, kind of emulate and um, are similar to what they have um, on their receiving core. So I think the fact that we've seen that all camp, we've been competing against that all camp, that really prepares us for what we're going to see and what we're going to be faced against with Michigan State and their receiving core. And so I feel very comfortable with that and very confident in our guys in the secondary to, to handle that because um, it's nothing we haven't seen, I don't think. Um, the run game is going to be – Obviously, um, very tough. Like you said, some smash mouth football. Some, uh, uh, I think that that's just going to be something we're going to have to face every play and something we're going to have to bring consistently 
is, you know, hats to the ball, um, strength in numbers, um, which I think we rallied the ball really well. We emphasized that in camp, and that's just kind of um, what we're trying to make as our identity as a defensive unit. So I think that's the best way to handle the run game for us. Your um, senior year at Mount Crest, you were injured. Yeah. What was the nature of that, and how did you end up at Snow through that? Um, so I injured my knee um, in the first half of the season and to a point where um, I couldn't come back. And um, the summer before my senior year, I had um, been to a lot of camps, talked to a lot of schools, and had some offers on the table for me to play at um, some other schools, um, like some Division A or some Division One AA schools. Um, but you know, I just didn't feel it was right for me to go to those schools at the time, and I, I really wanted to push my talents to play at a bigger school. And I figured if I was going to commit myself to you know four or five years at university of playing football, that I wanted to do it at the highest level I could. So um, I had a buddy that was going to Snow College. And he kind of brought up the idea and the opportunity to go there and, you know, then then move up to where I wanted to be. And, you know, I, I didn't see the walk on opportunity as being uh, something that was fit for me and my family at the time. So I took my chances with Snow College and I went there um, and played a season with them. Did you know where you wanted to be after Snow or did it matter that much to you? Going, um, going into Snow College, I, I didn't. I really just wanted to play um, Division One football somewhere somewhere that wanted me to come play for them. Um, and after a year at Snow College, I still had kind of similar offers, um, Eastern Michigan, um, schools like that, Weber, things like that. Um, I just didn't feel like, you know, I felt like of my ability I could play still better at a bigger school. And so I wanted to, I wanted to push that still. And um, I just felt like it wasn't right for me to be a snow anymore. I missed my hometown in Logan, and I realized it would be really cool if you know, I could play for my hometown in front of my family and friends and also fulfill my dream of playing for a Division One school at the same time. So I decided to leave Snow and come walk on up here. Gage, when you look at Michigan State, they've obviously got a heck of a running back with L.J. Scott. How do you, how, what kind of strides do you feel like the defense has made as far as stopping the run as compared to last year? Um, well, I think just um, – I can't think of the word for it. I think I think just our experience. Um, we have a lot of guys back. Um, we have a different game plan. We have uh, Keith Patterson, who um, emphasizes a lot of our defense in the run game, and he's very run stop minded. And I think he's going to bring a lot to our defense this year um, in helping stop the run. And I think it's going to be a lot different than it has been years past.